Hello there, and welcome to the third episode of Strategic Zoom Cast. In this episode, it's an RTN All Star plus Tomikaze um, 2v2 epic showdown of mental proportions. Let's just have a quick run through the players. The allied players are Tomikaze, who's friend of RTN. I'm going to say Lyconius, Lysonius, Lyconius, because I think it's easier to say. They're both pretty too damn good players, and they um, play 2v2 and 1v1 with a lot of um, prodigity. A lot. They play a lot. They play this game a lot. They're good. Then you've got RTN Ciers, who, um, you know, doesn't need much mention, really. He's a community staple, a tournament staple. And Momo for show, who equally is a damn good player in himself. Almost forgot to mention, you do have all four players in this game featured in the second round of Flexi Time Championships for Sears vs. Kongi. Um, they he'll, they'll play the winner of Jejelin Fahu. you got RTN Momo versus Antilles. So Sears and Momo, both Axis players, are in the same top left quadrant of the brackets. Further down, we also do have um, RTN Lyconius, who is the Brits player in this game. He's facing Jabakame. And we also do have um, Tomikaze, who's still to complete his round one game, hopefully today. So all four players are featured in the ongoing tournament. On the strategic zoom cast, we've got a few more innovations in tow. Let's just have a look, quick look what's happening here. Very, very early Kubel from our OKW player member for sure. I'm, I'm going to also take this uh, opportunity to mention that we have four factions. Uh, the only faction we're missing is USF, so it's Soviet and Brits versus Wehrmacht and OKW. Uh, the innovations that I've got going in this particular episode of... Um, strategic zoom cast relative to the last one good bit of um, reinforced wire going up on that green cover is it's a lovely summer day in moscow thanks to yan 252 we put our heads together and we worked out how to get um, better atmos atmospheric settings so i've removed fog basically if you watched episode two they have a really cool game with red wings and um love nest you you, you notice that the fog was pretty annoying uh, so on this one, I've got no fog. It's a lot more, a lot easier to watch, and we're going to be able to hopefully follow the engagements a little bit better. So let's quickly take track of what we've got here. We've got uh, th Soviet conscripts and the combat in New York. I have to get it away. They are probably going to get this fuel, though, seemingly. If we check in the center, you do have to zoom in to get the uh, icons to show up, unfortunately. Tommies have been trained for the Brits, so we're currently following the Brits and the Wehrmacht player. Sniper on the field from CS. This guy's going to be microing his sniper with a high degree of proficiency, one should expect. In terms of the eastern tip of the map, let's go and have a check what's going to be going on up there. It's a big map, this Moscow outskirts. You can notice because my panning when I zoom out isn't very fast. I'm going to just quickly uh, raise my sensitivity my mouse there to make it a little bit faster. Lowly uh, pioneers in the house trying to keep... Um, the allies from grabbing this fuel. You've got a grenadier in waiting behind the green cover. That's better. That's faster, isn't it? Kubelwagen already with a single kill, but um, the Soviets are trying to be kept away from this victory point. They are also currently cut off via this strategic point from their own fuel. Allow me to drink some disgusting coffee. The reason I'm drinking coffee is because I'm not used to casting 2v2. My spe not my speciality, because I'm not a very good player, but my speciality, I would say, is 1v1, because I've always played 1v1 things. For example, my hobby is rowing, and I row in a single. Um, I, I used to play chess as a kid. 1v1, to me, it just has something... It's about you versus your competitor. Uh, 2v2, you can have a, a stronger competitor or a weaker competitor being carried, for example, and the weaker competitor might be spamming in direct fire to make up for their lack of micro. And the strong players doing all the work on the field, and then the weaker players getting more damage. It's maddening. No, I like uh, I like it when we've got a situation like this. We've got two, four very competitive players literally throwing everything they've got at each other. False Grenadier struggling to get away there. Um, the Tommies actually removing themselves from cover to try and get the last shot, but if they'd stayed behind cover, they could have had more shots. So, well, obviously they're going to get more shots in the long run by chasing. So it's always a, a trade-off with Tommies, because if you remove them from cover, you uh, give them a chance to, you know, follow a retreating squad. But, of course, their damage output will decrease. It's the same as when you are, for example, with a Panzer II Lukes tank and you're chasing a retreating squad. To get the improved... 
improvement, the improvement in accuracy, you have to be stationary with a, an armoured fighting vehicle. However, to get the shots in, you have to keep following. So it's all about following, then going stationary. Following, then going stationary. Pro tip there. We've got the Wehrmacht pushing up the east. So that's Siez's side of the map. So he's doing pretty well. Momo's as OKW obviously doesn't quite have the early presence he might want. Obviously he's just got uh, Volksgrenadiers and a Kubel. In the north we've got a British sniper and obviously we have Siez's sniper who is already on two kills which isn't many but oh god that's a good Molotov. Oh good wipe against Momo for show there. Kubel wagons coming up to help out but uh, way too late in the engagement. We do have the Soviet player with a just the 82mm mortar. We have no uh, commanders chosen quite yet. Already. Oh, here we go. Momo for show's got the ISG out in its pre 29th of October unpatched state. So that thing, no doubt, will be a sniper in its own right. Absolutely decimating opposition. Let's have a quick check on the British player. What have we got building? Obviously, we've had the sniper. We've got the, uh, the six pounder anti tank gun. And it, ah, the ISG fight, it just kind of, it gives me a feeling inside myself that is not a nice feeling. I just hate the sound of it. Where's that house gone? It's been a long time since I've played Moscow Outskirts. Like I've, there used to be houses where there isn't houses for me now. Sorry, just drinking some coffee. Oh, that's disgusting. I uh, let the coffee dry out in the jar, so I've had to really mix it in, and it just doesn't taste right. What else have we got going on? So you can see that the Axis players are pretty much uh, pushed into this little tiny section of land there, and they're really trying to... Sorry, the Ally players, the Ally players, the Axis have pushed really hard. You've got um, the MG42 watching over the east, pretty much the sole thing watching over the east, to be honest. Well, the uh, Yeah, the Allies players have been played really hard off the map. This sniper... Uh, is coming onto the field and he's been joined by his brethren uh, so he's going to be a two sniper setup so you can see that Siaz is going to be going for hardcore manpower drain probably against uh, Lyconius the British player who's got the eastern half um, they are they are more or less sticking to their own halves currently which is always a good way to try and play 2v2 even if as these guys probably are on the RTN mumble no doubt if that still is a thing I'm not sure so they've got the full at back position on the battle group headquarters now in a 2v2 where all the players are aware that this battle group headquarters is there in fact there's already mortar pressure on it perhaps that's not the best idea <laughs> because uh, if you get some heavy indirect fire on that you know it's not going to be good and it's nice to see now we've got Shinix zoom cast just with it's a, like a kind of blitzkrieg mod level of view I don't have to do much with the camera controls. <laughs> I am going to quickly check out what's going on over here. Uh, Stern Pioneer was pushed away by a combat engineer and might die on retreat. Dear God. In fact, does go down. Here we go. We've got artillery put in. Again by the uh, British base artillery. Oh, sorry. My bad. Let's focus back in and have a look what's happening with the units. Oh, good shot there on the killing several Volksgrenadiers. British are going to be pushed away for now. You've also got a ZIS gun firing on the battle group headquarters. They really don't want this thing to exist. And as it is a heavy uh, manpower investment of 300 manpower for the OKW player, it would be a good steal at this point. It would uh, diminish the Axis player's uh, hold on the centre ground and also obviously uh, remove a vital resource for them. Oh, that could have been a good uh, ISG shot there, Liege there. Liege, Liege, I don't know how to say. I'll keep with ISG. I'm not very good with pronunciations, I must say. The British are trying to push out of their side of the map, so Lyconius, you would say, is the most under the cosh at the moment. Tomikaze has got his own fuel and he's got his own uh, western victory point. So, uh, CS seemingly has really put the cost down on the British player. Let's have a check on the snipers. He's this got this sniper on hold fire. And this sniper not on hold fire, he's on five kills. So this sniper clearly is waiting for the British sniper to poke his head out. The British sniper currently yeah is quite close. 
You can see the distances there. That's quite a good representation of that. In the centre, you've got lots of um, fire, seemingly, currently. Is Kubel still rocking? You've got seven kills. That's not bad for a Kubel. Surprised that's only... Well, very close, if you look on the bottom right. It's very close to second Pippa Veterancy. Very quick Jagdpanzer. Only 11 minutes. That'll be good if... Uh, let's check on Tomikaze. No, we haven't got any Tier 3 from the Soviet player quite yet. Sticking with Tier 2. So that's, that'll explain, obviously, the Mortar and the Zis. Well, that goes without saying. Um, so, yeah, very quick Jagdpanzer. That's going to be good on Moscow. Moscow always has had long lines of sight. Good attack by the Volksgrenadiers. Oh, nice mine there on those Volksgrenadiers. They're leaving with one man remaining. So that Mortar and the Zis now being pushed away. And uh, Tomikaze is now bringing guards on the field, so he's chosen his faction as uh, mechanized support tactics, which is an ISU-152 heavy assault gun doctrine. CS has chosen fortified armor, which is an elephant tank destroyer doctrine. So we could be seeing the two biggest heavy tank destroyers in the game going head-to-head -head later on, which would be quite exciting. Interesting waste of munitions there from Momo. Unfortunately, didn't hit the mark on those conscripts. You can't blame him for trying, though. And uh, that, I'd have to say that that conscript, considering it had both guards, two conscripts, and a combat engineer firing on him, did very well to escape there. Right, I'm just going to nail the rest of this coffee now. Bear with me. I will get to be better on my camera when I'm not holding a coffee. Nice. Let's get casting. Let's see what we've got. ISG. Currently on zero kills. It's not done as much as you would have expected, has it really? It must be said. This sniper's still on hold fire. The other sniper is also on hold fire, so they're both waiting for the British sniper to poke out his head. And he's just chilling again, just north of that church where he was before. Unlucky with that guard's grenade, it literally went in the worst possible place for Tomikaze there. I'm surprised that ISG got a kill there. I think it killed a dying squad. Yeah, there's some dying... Um, I think that's a guardsman, perhaps. Oh, dear God! The guards take four deaths, and the other guy's on a pip of health. In fact, the Volsgrenis nearly got the, uh, the clear up from Momo there. Now, unfortunately, the ISG is firing on Momo, which isn't very helpful. His own ISG... The British sniper is so uh, absolutely tied up now. He knows there's an enemy sniper and he can't act on the central ground where he wants to be. Oh, this conscript could be going down. Perhaps not. As this conscript could be going down. It's a, a, it seems like we've got a stream of one-man conscripts running away. A lot of uh, indirect fire on the field. Let's check on the mortar. That's on uh, only three kills. So to be fair... Six kills now for the ISGs. That racked up quickly. Hitting a mine there, it seems. Let's check on what we've got cooking. We've got any... Um, so, Ciaz has got a very rugged build. Two packs at the moment. We've got uh, Momo. He's got his Jagdpanzer. Let's check out what's been happening elsewhere in the, the, the battle. It seems the Allies have managed to slowly put... Well, they recognise that this was completely unguarded. And with one British Tommy, who's now been forced away, um, he managed to cap the juicy areas there. So we've got a British mortar down with five kills. We that's the first time we've recognised that on the field. Uh, God, this Tommy could be going down to Volksgrenadier fire. In fact, he does a headshot. That's brutal. An uncamouflaged, uh, with no skin, Jagdpanzer IV. That's interesting. Looks quite nice, doesn't it, with just the uh, the blue hue to its armour. Probably seeing an incendiary grenade going in here. Elsewhere, we've got the um, the Wehrmacht from Siez now with the LMG upgrades to its grenadiers. Molotov goes in. It, it doesn't hit the mark. The sniper's now off hold fire because we haven't seen the British sniper for a long time. So the um, counter snipe seemingly isn't going to happen. The other sniper is a little bit further back. The conscripts have recognised that uh, they're going to have to get out of there. Jagdpanzer IV comes out against the early Achilles Centaur. 
gets a good shot in there. So Lycon is, Lyconius' is Centaur is now on 20% health. One more shot should do it. Does get behind the shot blocker. The Jagdpanzer is going to... Oh, great movement with the Shrekt up Volts Grenadiers there from Momo. I didn't even recognise that happening with my uh, extended camera abilities. And now he goes in on the, uh, the, AAT, the AA gun. Sorry, the AT gun for the British player. He wipes that. Of course, the British blob is going to come and answer the uh, question posed to them by Momo. Unfortunately, it's too late, though. The, set, the Centaur has gone down, so there's 100 fuel wasted. And the mid-game, you know, beam off for the British has the first one, and, well, we can expect another, has been utterly squandered, it seems. Very good work from Momo for sure there, showing his pedigree. With a great great flank from the Volts Grenadiers and a great thrusting movement from the Agpanzer IV. Seemingly getting line of sight here from Tom Akazi. I wonder what that's going to entail. Looking at the uh, artillery on the British, thought, thinking that's why he was getting that line of sight. Perhaps not. Oh, God. There comes the British mortar. Things are still on five kills, but... um. That's the Soviet mortar doing the damage there. We can check on that now. That's on four, so uh, it's it's quite um, quite a modest amount, really. The Kubel is sorry, not the Kubel. The ISG is currently on it. Well, to be expected to be the. Uh, oh, we've got a. We've got a. I'm just going to watch this. Sorry. Want to see where it lands? It's so beautiful. Not a bad landing, fully intact in fact. There, here come the commandos. In the meantime, we've had um, the German players slowly try and get this central ground. On the west, we've now got the conscripts uh, soaking up that ground. And on the east, it seems that this sniper um, backing up the uh, Tommies has pushed away the grenadier. So we've got trading all the time there. Obviously, the vast proportion of troops are... For, it's an air landing officer from Lyconius, by the way. An air landing officer. These things are utterly ferocious, it must be said. Even though they have less men than commandos, they are pretty brutal. And yeah, very quick retreat from Momo there. Good reaction times from him. He didn't stick around to see what damage they do. He just got the hell out of dodge. Not bad. Good stun shot from these snipers. Oh god, the air landing off is going ham for leather. It's straight for the... Unfortunately, they don't get anything. It seems like the... I think it might have been a friendly mortar shot seemed to rock them. Definitely wasn't the ISG because they would have been pinned if that hit them. Oh, what a grenade! That is brutal! Eight kills already on the air landing officer. That was what's a light gammon bomb, 35 munitions. And that thing does straight away in on the ISG. Two squads. Possibly could see a squad wipe if these guys with the LMGs focus. Very good to and throw action. It is always a slugfest on Mints. Minsk, what am I on about? On Moscow outskirts. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's a pretty damn good attack there. Got a full health glider there, always useful. A bunker down from CS, not a bad choice. Can stop that harassment on the east. Okay, we've got the Zis firing with its uh, anti-infantry artillery fire. The light artillery barrage. ISG missing its mark in its answer. And here comes the Brumbar. Momo for sure has gone straight for tier 4. Brumbar, what am I on about? <laughs> here comes the Sturm Tiger. It's an OKW player and it's a giant, massive, I think, how many millimetres? 200 millimetres? It's, it's humongous, anyway. 38 centimetres, that's 380 millimetres, of course. Is that right? How many millimetres? There's 10 millimetres and a centimetre. Yes, I am right. 380 millimetres, that thing is. It's a rocket attack. It's absolutely humongous. It's mostly ever used in uh, the Warsaw Uprising. Not the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising against the Jews. The Warsaw Uprising against the Polish partisans, as the Germans would have called them. Basically civilians. And it was used, I think, a, a couple of other times in uh, other engagements against Americans, actually. But it is an utter beast. So that confirms that, of course, we do have elite armor chosen. Because that's the only way you can use one of these things now. Brumbar. It does, to be fair, from behind, it does look a little bit like a Brumbar. 
It does have that kind of box of uh, doom approach. He's not fired yet, he's waiting for the perfect assault. Oh, interesting, the air landing officer went straight in for the stern pioneers there. Elsewhere on the map, we've got uh, Cromwell this time for Lyconius. And on the west, we've got the uh, Vault's Grenadiers clearing up. So Momo's showing great map awareness here. He's trying to... This wouldn't be a bad target, surely. No, he's really going to wait until he fires that thing. We're going to have to keep an eye on it, though. It's just absolutely pushing everything off the field, though, if you think about it. Jagpans has been caught unaware there. <laughs> it's got, it's been stun-shotted by the sniper, and uh, it's got hardly any back. I mean, it has got the snipers, but what they can, what can they do against Cromwell? That thing got utterly caught unaware, and I blame that on the fact that Momo's been having to think about several things at once. He's been trying to find the perfect target for his Sturm Tiger. All the while, that's now been caught up, seemingly with. Uh, an anti-tank grenade going on its rear and the Zis coming in on its front. Great from the uh, Thunderbolt strike there. Hawker Typhoons rather, obviously they are British. Very similar to Thunderbolts it must be said. And the Sturm Tiger is seemingly going to survive? That's a waste of uh, 200 munitions I've ever seen one because uh, if it survives that is. It's got to get out of this reticle. The reticle centre is there. And it's got to try and get out of it. So it's it's self-repairing now. That's emergency repairs, rather. But the li line of sight is still being found by the guards' rifles. Although I don't know what they plan to do against it. In fact, it may have to fire its first shot in answer here. You'd be expecting? No? It just knows it doesn't fancy it. All the while in the east, we've got the Cromwell now under danger from a Panther tank of all things. That's going to be quite aggressive. The uh, six pounder did get too aggressive and is going to get taken in answer. So the Cromwell survives. The Panther with one kill from its, probably from its turret mounted MG. I can't believe the Sturm Tiger survived. I mean, think about it. It got attacked by a Zis, an anti-tank grenade against its rear armour, and then um, the Hawker Typhoons were called down on it. And you'd expect that they would have done a lot more damage than that against such a, a heavy lumbering target with engine damage. I, you know, that that's probably not as potent as Relic would like them to be, most likely. Still in awe of this landing from the uh, from Lyconius, the Horsa Glider. Uh, not even got a scratch on its paintwork. You'd expect it to having flown through a flag. Let's check on the snipers. These things are racking up the kills. In fact, they're about to rack up more kills. One has 19 kills, the other has 16. And they're against British targets here, which cost a lot more than uh, Soviet targets. Mainly because the British Army was so much smaller in World War II. Red Army was ginormous. The Soviets could afford to lose so, uh, a few men here and there. Not that they wanted to, but they could afford to. And the battle lines have been drawn. You've got, uh, fortunately for the Allies, they have all three victory points currently. But they need to have them because they are at a deficit around uh, 100 VP point, uh, VP deficit. Obviously, point, the point is in the P there. Good rifle nade off on that uh, Vickers there. And the the Panther's surely going to take out the, the glider the, that previously had... No? Maybe not. They seem to be shooting at us. <laughs> really coming in against the battle group headquarters with this attack. And the Soviets are too. I wonder what they're going to call down here. Oh, by the way, the... the uh, IS-2152 is on the field, I can see that. Oh god! First artillery strike comes down. Oh, was that the, uh... That was the IS-2 with its first shot! Five kills, that's pretty, uh... Ridiculous. Oh! What a shot from the Sturm Tiger! That thing's 
first shot after so long. Eight kills, not bad at all. Panther gets shocked by the ISU, which is currently on. Um, no, it's it's currently on its anti-infantry uh, high explosive shells. Stone Tiger's reloading, of course. Cromwell, I don't know if that's the original. I think it must be the original Cromwell. God, that uh, three-inch mortar in place from Lyconis is currently on 14 kills. That's not bad at all. Obviously, with it being in such prime real estate on Moscow outskirts, you can expect it to really get up there. IS-2 oh, is going to wail on the battle group headquarters. We have had some destruction of the shot blocker at the northern tip there, so you can really afford to do that. All the while, we've got the uh, strafing support. Oh, we did have a crash there, there. And here they come. They're really gunning for it now. You've got both the Cromwell, the ISU, you've got the SU-76 from Tomikaze. The Sturm Tiger has been abandoned? I didn't see that happen. It's on full health in it. Oh, of course, because the corpse is right next there. So that's what they were focusing on there. Sorry to have missed that. And the uh, the Axis really are under the cosh now. The Allies have all three victory points and they're pushing as hard as humanly possible. And there we go. Battle Group Headquarters down. Sturm Tiger now jumps into its fully health the crew jumps straight into the fully health squad there, the fully health um, armour there and there you go, there's the full field of view oh god, insta wipe obviously that's 9 kills on that one, the previous one, here we go the Churchill Crocodile, the pre-patched Churchill Crocodile is now on the field, the packs are going to get utterly decimated by this thing and you've got all the armour rolling in behind, the ISU doesn't need to roll in because it's got the incredible lines of sight that thing's still on um, high explosive rounds the Churchill's just going ham for leather, it can afford to, you've got a pack however watching it doing its best to uh, get some good shots in there SU-76 on artillery rounds against that pack. 13 kills for the 152. Cromwell doing its best. The um, air landing officer is about to die, but has been giving line of sight from that building. It's on fire, he doesn't realise seemingly, so we'll keep an eye on that. Good bit of ret uh, ret smoke retreat there. That's a very nifty ability for the... Uh, I swear that was a commander ability, never mind. Must be a uh, Elling officer ability. And great, um, great to and throw action. If you notice, the Axis players have taken a Vault Grenadier and a uh, Grenadier, respectively, to f take the victory points. So that's good. Even whilst under the cosh, they can think about that. And um, the map has now swung in their favour ever so slightly. Let's talk about snipers. We've got 30 kills on one and uh, 25 kills on the other, so a good 55 kills together there. Not bad, not bad at all. I can't believe that this uh, glider's still in perfect condition. What's this? What's this plane? Uh, that's, I believe. Ah, that's a recon since overflight. Oh, here we go. The elephant's on the field. It's going hunting. Against the heavily damaged ISU 152. Does it have line of sight? Seemingly not. Doesn't quite get there due to that smoke. That is unfortunate. Cromwell's going to come in against the elephant. You've got the Sturm Tiger in. So the two big heavies for the Axis players. Bovington's finest having to retreat. The Churchill on seven kills is getting repaired. Oh, great shot there by the Sturm Tiger. Um, that's now on 12 kills, but it was a great shot in that it got rid of the Zis. Didn't quite destroy it, but you'd expect it to. Oh my god, what a shot on the Cromwell there from the Elephant. Oh, and the finishing blow. So we can be expecting that Elephant to really be an MVP for CS now, along with the Sniper. So he has um, a ferocious array of long-range um, long weaponry. you got the allies now pushing in the east to cap their fuel. 
but it doesn't matter when you've got the, uh, the weaponry to do the damage. Elsewhere we've got the Churchill now having to push in the east due to the elephant. Obviously going to go in against this. Uh, doesn't say what it is. <laughs> it's an MG42 because it's from CS. We can expect. Not a. Uh... Yeah, it is MG42. I could have thought it could have been a Vic as that was possibly stolen earlier. Yeah, this crocodile. They're going to have to run away because the crocodile is something to be contended with. And the elephant and the packs are now having to push to the east to contend with the crocodile. That's just how ferocious the crocodiles are. It can cause you to redirect your entire armor force. Um, let's check what else the Allies have by way of armor. Of course, they still have the ISU-152, which is getting repaired. We've got the Sturm Tiger and a newly built Jagdpanzer for Momo for show. And Ciez, of course, has... It does have a scout car that's been doing nothing. Maybe he's tired. I mean, what can it do? <laughs> Very lucky escape for those Volta Grenadiers against what you can only assume is a Churchill doing its business. An air landing officer, the one that barely escapes down 12 kills. We've got a teller being laid there. It won't be completed, so that was to try and protect against this crocodile. Not going to happen. Packs in a forward position, hoping to pick against the ISU-152, no doubt. Not quite going to get it. We've now got a Vet-3 sniper, that's 31 kills, and his friend has 34. So the 31 kill sniper must have been against higher priority targets. Great IL-2 precision bombing strike there by the Soviets. Against uh, ground, didn't hit anything. And what have we got called in here? Seems like we've got strafing support. Only, yeah, scratching the paint paintwork of the Agpanzer, seemingly. Sturm Tiger on. Is that still 12 kills from Sturm Tiger? I do have the UI smaller than I would usually have it for a 1v1 because I believe you need to uh, see more of the map in a 2v2. Oh, accidentally hit Fog of War, my mistake. So that DIN is unfortunately the strafing support. We have a command tank for CS, so he's added to his armour, so it will be an elephant supported by a command tank for the duration of the game, most likely. The ISU is climbed up to 21 kills, still on its uh, high explosive rounds. There we go, good crash. Delayed sound effect, it must be said. The crash happened before the plane went down, according to the sound. But of course, sound does travel slower than the speed of light, so maybe that's why. Let's put let's put it that way. Elephant slumbers into action against the ISU-152. Going to take off shot here, see how much damage it does in its first shot. Not quite got that kind of line of sight, seemingly. Oh, hang on. No, he's out of fog of war now. It seems. There we go. From the reconnaissance, will he get a shot off? Are you going to try? Seemingly not. Oh dear god, the crocodile. That's why he's, he's more preoccupied with the fact that a crocodile was eating up pioneers for breakfast. The unvetted Jagdpanzer rolls into action. We have got a uh, six pounder in position. We're ready to thwart these packs. They are moving through fire, which never helps. So yeah, the uh, seemingly the conscripts just got eaten. That's what Tomikaze was lolling at. Stern Pioneer just uh, shot at the conscripts and they tried to thwart it, probably. This is an epic game. They, they, they were right in the description on the replay, you must be said. We've got 200 VPs, respectively. Good shot off on the, the... Oh god, the crocodile's in a really precarious position there. It takes a pack shot, two Jagdpanzer shots, a Shrek shot. It's got destroyed engine and the Jagdpanzer gets the kill. That nearly gives it one pip of veterans straight away. The six pounder is going to wail on the Jagdpanzer and the packs are stopping it advancing. Come on, packs, get out of the way, get out of the way. No, not quite line of sight there enough to see what was happening. 
IS-2 has now climbed to 27 kills. It's pretty much had this field of um, attack here. In the base we've got the um, got a T-34 building. Interesting. That'll be a T-34-76, no doubt. Due to the commander choice. Um, in terms of the... God, the... Uh, the infantry support guns really fall back. It's on 27 kills, three pips of veterancy. So that's thwarting against any uh, conscripts that try and attack this Kessel here. They've used these trees. I'm surprised they're still standing, to be honest. They've used them to the absolute uh, maximum extent they can use them. Unvetted guards rolling onto the field. Both snipers have both pips of veterancy now. Oh, Sturm Tiger's coming from an oblique angle. Not going to get a shot because he's worried about the conscripts and receiving engine damage. So yeah, he was probably going to come in from an oblique angle and try and do some damage there. And the snipers all the while are climbing. God, 40 kills now. My uh, contact lenses are going a bit foggy, so I am going to have to increase the size of that. Let's Let's compromise. Let's have it on that. Scout car remembers it exists and comes in to help these pioneers thwart off a Vet 3 Tommy and his Royal Engineer companion. Just to the east, we've got uh, the Axis recapping their side, well, the northern tip of their map. They do have the western side. In terms of fuel, it's fairly even. The, uh, uh, the Allied players have a lot of options when they get the manpower. You can see that this is a competitive game because they're really having to, um, you know, God, we've got a lot of people at PopCap. Momo for sure show. That shows that he's got a lot of um, unit preservation. He's on 100 PopCap. It also shows that he's got a lot of his um, stuff is tied into... When does he build that? He's got a half flak half track. Maybe that's for strafing the planes and stuff to take them out. But he's, yeah, as I say, he's got a lot of his PopCap tied up in uh, vehicles. Oh god, here come the T-3476s, getting an instant wipe, that was what we heard on the radio there. And these things are going to be quite a little potent force, they don't have to worry about them dying because they're so cheap. However, it does look like they are going to die, the packs were facing the right way for a moment, great um, intuition there. One of the T-3476s goes down, the other barely survives. Elsewhere we've got the Churchill coming in, seemingly have gotten a quite a few kills for itself there. The elephant's trying to face. Obviously, we've got this shot blocker there. The packs are going to have to go and get some heals. They, the models on the packs are very low in health. ISU-152 has got 27 kills, so it is vaguely paying for itself. The Jagdpans is feeling very cocky, trying to get line of sight, seemingly. Let's get a bounce on the ISU. Sturm Tiger's been relatively impotent, if you consider the fact that it got abandoned, which was very lucky. And it's got another wipe. Just as I call it impotent, it proves me wrong. We're getting a, a full wipe. Only on a Vet 1 squad, though, so not the end of the world for the Soviet player. There we go. The uh, Horsa Glider does have a tiny, tiny bit of damage now. And that's a shame, isn't it? So if you notice, the Allied players have really pushed the Axis players back in terms of victory point control, although it has been fairly to and throw. I would have argued that if the Soviet player could have built a howitzer, I know I personally dislike seeing howitzer play, especially in 2v2, because it, it's, it's difficult to... Uh, a lot of the manpower is taken up by the howitzers. Let's try and get an idea. You don't need to really focus on the ice, you can see it from space. <laughs> oh god, what the hell is this? What have we got called in? Looks like it's more strafing support. Will the anti-tank go... Uh, no, it was too busy moving, so it couldn't quite get the shots off. The elephant has been uh, momentarily shocked. Churchill's coming in from the east. We've got the command tank's been thwarted ever so slightly there. The Churchill's just going ham for la leather here. The British player does have 205 um, fuel in the bank, 207, but... You could argue really shouldn't be playing playing with fire with his Churchill. It should be the Churchill that's dealing the fire. Very dangerous movement there. The elephant seems to bounce uh, the 
not Typhoon. Are they Typhoons? Did I get it right this time? Yeah, the Typhoon shots really well. Churchill's going to get away, it seems. The planes are really pissing me off now. They're making so much noise. Scorched Earth there. It's not even craters anymore. It's literally been crystallized. Oh! <laughs> if that was uh, July, that would have killed everything. But fortunately, those things did get... By the way, that was a good call, seemingly, for a Momo sh show. Yeah, in fact, I had to say he's been... Him and CS have been uh, playing really well together in this game. Good uh, synergy and good choices. Uh, you can argue that the Allied players have been very aggressive and continually aggressive with decent levels of uh, preservation for the most part. Um, uh, probably, yeah, decent levels, not amazing. So the German players have done well to stay in this. They haven't abused Ally, Ally IGs. Uh, infantry support guns, to be fair to them. In fact, there's not been that much pretty use. You can tell that it is a clan-based game. They are, they do have variety in unit composition, which is a little bit honourable. T3476 is going down, it seems. I mean, did get eight kills. Depends what those kills were, I guess. That lent it one field pip of veteracy before it died. I am talking about it in the past tense. There's its friend from earlier that just got killed again. So its friend from beyond the grave nearly... Oh my god, it's going to survive! Are you kidding me? That's line of sight for you. ISU-152. Climbed 30 kills. Let's check on the snipers. We've got 45 and 46 respectively. So they've got good parity with each other. It must be a Legolas and Gimli kind of situation where they're competing for the most kills. In terms of victory point control, you've got Lycanus... Lyconius and Tomikaze are doing really well for themselves now. They're on 187, which is twice what their opponents have at 91. More than twice what they have. It's a really precarious situation. Air landing officer is an utter beast on well, only 14 kills, but he has been a beast. We have seen what he's capable of in this game. Wouldn't like to go up against a scout call and a command tank and a Sturm Tiger, though. Not the greatest mission I've ever seen. But here comes the uh, crocodile feeling very aggressive against an elephant of all things. That'll penetrate. Abandoned scout car, nobody will care about that very much. That thing can die for everybody. All uh, CS will care, no doubt, because he... Oh, good shot from the Sturm Tiger, and the... That must have been, yes, one of the packs got the kill. Great shot from the Sturm Tiger, that, that'll give it some decent experience. If it had got the kill, it definitely would. The ISU-152 is out for vengeance on this elephant, though. Quarter pounder goes back down. Lyconius has been a very aggressive player, and he has paid... God! The plane just crashed into the church, and that's down now. We have got a Sherman Firefly from Lyconius with the, the upgrade, the Tulip Rockets. This is an utter slugfest. It's all focused around here. That's why I've got so much scorched earth. It's like a fallout bloody Mojave Desert wasteland now. Scout car, nobody gives a shit about that. In fact, CS destroys it. <laughs> 89 victory points remaining. The Axis players are going to have to act now and act quickly if they want to win this thing. And I, I presume they want to win. This is a Katusha rocket barrage trying to thwart victory points. Surprise we haven't seen uh, the compatriot from the... Murmur for sure OKW player in that he's not built the... A rocket truck for the OKW. Stone Tiger does have a full barrel ready to be unleashed. It's going west with that. Wasn't very good last time it went west. That T-34 for Tomikaze that escaped by the skin of its teeth has uh, been fully repaired. Firefly's not done anything yet. Seems like a waste. This is, again, it's more strafing support. Hopefully that flat truck's still alive, because I was really bored of seeing it last time. It made so much noise. Infantry group are lost. An infantry support gun was stolen by Tomikaze. Was that the uh, one that he's been using for the majority of the game? No, that was an early one. We never caught that, unfortunately. Oh, tulip rockets go in! Not a bad skill shot against the uh, command tank. It did kill three pioneers, I guess. Could have been a lot better for the munitions it cost. I mean, that thing costs... Oh, only 50. It costs a lot to upgrade as well, I guess. Oh, the air landing officer barely escapes there. Gained line of sight for the 
it's the elephant that's doing the damage here against the... Oh, just barely misses against the Sherman Firefly. So we've got the Vet 3 Tommies and the air landing officer trying to escape against the command tank. That's trying its hardest to get the wipe. He's now going to have to focus on the Tommy. All the while, you've got the Sherman Firefly, although wounded, is a highly potent anti-vehicle presence. Good job that the uh, command tank didn't go west of the abandoned, uh, not abandoned, but destroyed church. Not many building vanillas left standing here. We've had the Yagpanzer all the while go up against... No, that cannot survive. He cannot keep getting away with this, says Jesse. Um, yeah, that, that T-3476 has had nine lives, it seems. On the victory point front, the Axis have just about managed to keep things level for the time being. New uh, crocodile out for Lyconius. IS-2152 is on two pips of veterancy at 38. In terms of snipers, one died, sorry for missing that. One is still alive at 49 kills. He, so it now is the master and the apprentice. Oh, what a shot from the elephant! The elephant finally pays its dues against that IS-2152. Sorry for missing the preamble to that. At least we caught it die. Katusha Rocket goes in. Um, not going to do much. It's more of a oh, you just killed my most valuable unit, I hate you kind of approach. If we look at Tomikaze, he did have the fuel and manpower reserves, so although he's basically just now lost a um, two strips of veterancy on his IS-2, he just has an, another one all of a sudden, which is how this game works. SU-85 also from Tomikaze, so he has two very similarly shaped tank destroyers, one of course being the bigger brother. Here comes the crocodile, second crocodile, the second coming of Mr. Crocodile. The elephant has been the... So you'd argue, argue that for Ciez, it's been, as you said earlier, his long-range weaponry has been utterly uh, keeping the Axis players in this thing. Good shot in there. I hear thunder. Storm Tiger does have a full barrel. It is ready to uh, react to anything the Atlas players do. And, um, yeah, the Axis players are really going to have to camp the VPs now if they want to stay in this game. 49 uh, kills still for that sniper. And here we go, it's the final leg of the battle. We're currently 48 minutes into this epic slugfest. And it's going to be interesting. I mean, just look at the destruction on that battlefield. That is horrendous. This used to be a beautiful uh, town on the outskirts of Moscow, and now it's just been absolutely devastated. There's the earlier 152, and the new 152 just takes up the exact same position. Rinse, repeat. So the, the SU-85 is going to kill this Jagdpanzer. The, S, the lucky, lucky, lucky Tomikaze. Uh, Sturm Tiger goes in, gets a very high priority target there. It got a pip of veterancy. Probably... And, ah, yes, it was the, uh, the infantry support gun that got stolen. Those conscripts look like they're going to survive. No. Trying to find the uh, oh my god the Jagdpanzer four escaped. Just trying to find its wreckage. We've got the oh god, we've got the uh, Sherman Firefly coming in on the command tank there. It barely escaping. Very good shot. Oh my god, I can't believe the Katusha was so close. It was just asking for death. So Tomikaze is getting really tired at this point in the game. You can sense. Um, we've got the Axis player pushing to the east, that's MoMA for show's game sense, he's going to have to get those victory points if he wants to win. The Allies have been drained to uh, 168 remaining now, so it seems that the Axis players are in a dominant position currently. If you notice that uh, Lyconius is really lacking in any infantry presence, he has got 400 manpower remaining, but um, it's mostly his cr it's Sher Sherman Firefly which is now on 5 kills which is one vehicle, three infantry, high priority vehicle there. He obviously got a lot of damage off on the uh, Panzer IV command tank, which is still rocking, it's been on the battlefield quite a while. The elephant is on three uh, pips of veterancy, it's a vet three elephant, which is really good. It gives it uh, greater accuracy, greater frequency, what a shot from the Sturm Tiger! That is absolutely unreal. So the Apprentice Sniper is really suffering for health. The Vet 3 Sniper, of course, showing us with 55 kills. Churchill is uh, marauding in the northern tip of the map there. 
What else have we got? We've got the Allies now pushing for this victory point. They're also putting up a what is surely a demo there. So that'll that'll come in handy. Sherman Firefly is getting backed up by another Sherman Firefly. So a Master and Apprentice duo there with the Crocodile. So that's a lot of investment by Lyconia. So Flak Truck trying to prevent the squad. They saw that the demo got quite a few kills off from the Vulture right here before it happened there. Yeah, and the Churchill's now going in on the Jagdpans. They're two shots, take it to 60% health. Commandos are going to have to retreat. Lyconius does need some infantry. Oh, and the Jagdpans, it doesn't do the greatest uh, thing in the world by going around the shot blocker. Obviously, uh, this command tank is gets a shot off on the elephant before he gets out of there. That's not too shabby. It's a shame that the flat truck isn't anywhere near bit by. He could have uh, stopped those planes annoying us. One flat truck did die, it seems. Let's check on what Tom is doing. He's got this IS-2 still in the battlefield. He can't be as aggressive as he'd like with the elephant being there, though. And in terms of victory points, the Allies are now below 100. Quite a lot of below 100. It's 85 remaining against 38, so it could go either way at this point. Both, um... Hang on. Sorry, he's got one upgraded... Firefly and one unupgraded, the Master and Apprentice situation. Talking about Masters, let's go back over to our Sniper, he's on 59 kills now. So the, yeah, the Germans really are getting their late game um, experience. A very interesting T-3476 here, no doubt waiting for an ambush. Won't be much of an ambush if it's against the Stern Tiger and the shot gets carried off. Oh my god, and we've also got the Elephant coming to focus. I don't want to be that T-34. Got a Stern Tiger going on a flanking mission around the southern tip of that shot blocking hedge there. Elephant's noted that the T-34 needs to be killed. Stern Tiger's going to go through the trees. I don't want to be that T-34. Doesn't need to happen. Guards are there though. They get nearly destroyed. One man remaining. All the while we've got a lull in activity in the center. Will the will they survive? Seemingly so. Can't see them die. Elephant has no uh, turret mounted MG to pick them off. The infantry sport gun takes a shot. The snipers could have gotten it if they'd been a bit more proactive. I think Ciez has done very well to keep them alive, and it's um, you know his conservative nature with them that has kept them alive. You know, what the master at least in the game for that long. Obviously, the original, uh, his original buddy did die. Oh god, the Churchill is uh, entering the lion's den, especially when the elephant comes back. When elephant comes home, it's going to be a different situation. Katusha goes in. I mean, I, I, I haven't seen that Katusha get many kills, and that's obviously the second one I know. Oh god, but my point gets. My point is still proven. I don't think we first got that many kills here. We just saw a stern pioneer die. An utter uh, massacre in this game. Oh god, this IS-2-152 does go down to that pack. The elephant did most of the work. Here come the Sherman Fireflies. They're trying to flank the elephant. They have gotten, they've taken advantage of the shot blocking uh, hedge formation. Oh, the Vet-3. Sturm Tiger gets the kill on it. Both Sherman Fireflies look like they're going down. Will it get the kill on the Vet-3 Elephant? No, it will not. Is there any... Uh, back up. No, there is not. There was no backup for it. So, Lyconius went in alone there. Obviously, the 152 was no longer alive to help him. The second 152. So, we've seen both. God, it looks like Axis are going to get this, I think. I can't see what Lyconius can do. He's got still got a Vet 3 Mortar on 36 kills, but that can't do much against a Vet 3 Elephant. That now with 5 pieces of veterancy, I'd argue that CS should make sure that thing stay al stays alive. I mean, I know the Allies are now on 49 VPs remaining, but you can never be too sure. Katusha's getting ready for its uh, barrage. Maybe it can be better this time. Stern Tigers on two pips of Ventricy. 43 kills, two pips of Ventricy. That's a lot of uh, requirements of, to upgrade, isn't it? To uh, be promoted, rather. Got a Vet 3 Elephant. CS is really getting cocky with that thing. All of its kills against high-priority vehicle uh, targets, of course, because it's utterly useless against the 
infantry, but that's not its specialty. Silhouette Maker from the Katusha, not doing any damage against anything. I mean, if the barrage had hit the elephant maybe with three different rockets, it could have got a penetration against it. But not one hits anything. In fact, closest we got was just there. We've got a, I think that's a Cromwell being built. And it looks like Axis have got this. I can't see. Um, we've got Moment for Show putting his flat truck up in a very prominent position in the centre. All the while you have this um, Vickers stolen by CS. There's the stolen Vickers. Um, that's watching over the west. And I really don't see how Tomikaze... I mean, they've got their units building, but they've got 29 victory points remaining. I mean, the tick will be at two uh, ticks per three seconds, I think it is. Is that how it's measured? I think something like that, anyway. I mean, I think it, I was watching OCF and am I part Sly Funk? And um, CS, of all people, who is in this game, were talking about it. Failure is not rewarded. I can't believe that glider's still in action. <laughs> of all the things that have died in this game, you wouldn't have thought a glider very close to the centre would have survived. T-34, so they're getting desperate now. T-34 is rushing against an elephant. Yeah, go for the ram, buddy. <laughs> he misses. Does hit the Cromwell instead. Churchill's coming in. They're really just going to have to go ham for leather here. Cromwell reversing into action. The um, Churchill crocodiles trying to flank the elephant. And uh, obviously focusing an elephant isn't the greatest thing you can do. The Sturm Tiger's getting wailed on there. Elephant's had to get out of there. Can't reverse out of there seemingly. He's, he's too worried about it dying. Rakettenwerfer gets the kill on the Churchill. Sturm Tiger's in a precarious situation. The shit uh, Katusha again does barely nothing. There goes the T-34. The um, Cromwell did go down. We have got a new one built. The Sturm Tiger is still alive. All the while, 11 victory points remaining for the Allies. There goes T-34. Sniper on 65 kills. The other sniper, the Apprentice, on 13. Not bad. Here comes the Cromwell with a little bit of a skin glitch. I blame that on my atmospheric uh, presets. Bounces off. I think it must have been the. Uh, that's that basically is a flat truck using cover because he used the uh, halt of the old tank. Come on, focus the Sturm Tiger. You got nine pips remaining. Oh, and he dies. The Allies have um, been squashed. It seems. Just the uh, the rolling. It's a tale as old as time. There we go. GG. Well played. Called by Lyconia. C as replies. Moment for show replies, and I think Tom Akazi is very embittered by his loss because he does not reply. And what a fantastic game. I'm going to pause the game now because um, an hour and one minute is enough for any man to cast, <laughs> even with a bathroom break, which I uh, thank you for letting me have. Look at the utter devastation caused on this battlefield. And thank you for watching. I thought that was an excellent game. I'm uh, very thankful to the four players for supplying it, and I'm very thankful to you for watching all of it. Um, until next time. Goodbye.